We are visiting with Senator Ted Cruz, Republican presidential candidate. Uh, you brought up the Washington cartel, and this is something that if people have been paying attention uh, to the campaign, you have spoke often about, about the Washington cartel. Uh, yeah. You made numerous references to it. L- let me ask you this question. I'm sure this is a, a question that many are wondering. Uh, when, when you mention Washington cartel, that makes, I think, a lot of voters seem like, oh, my goodness, this is almost impossible to break through in Washington, D.C. How would President Cruz break through the Washington cartel to really put America back on the right track? Well, Ch- Chad, is, it, it is a great question. Um, you know, as you know, I have a new book that came out a few weeks ago called A Time for Truth. And, and my new book, what it does is, is it takes readers behind closed doors in the United States Senate. If you ever wondered what has happened, what happens in a, a Republican Senate conference lunch, what, why is it that, 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 that Republican leadership seems to constantly cut deals with the Democrats and sell out the conservative principles that, that, that they campaign on and they get them elected? Well, my new book, A Time for Truth, shines the light on what's happening, and it tells the inside story of what I call the Washington cartel. What is the Washington cartel? It is career politicians in both parties who get in bed with lobbyists and special interests, and they grow and grow and grow government, and they stop listening to the men and women who elected them. And, and, and it is a, a growing problem. The Book of Time for Truth highlights the, 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 the role of money in Washington and how it's corrupting our elected officials. Now you ask, how do we change that? Well, there are two steps. There's number one, the election, and then number two, an office. On the election, we have an example in our lifetimes. In 1980, Ronald Reagan took on the Washington cartel. All of Washington despised Ronald Reagan. And he built a grassroots tidal wave that became the Reagan Revolution. It came from the American people, and it transformed this country. It brought us from economic stagnation to booming economic growth. It brought us from weak and feckless foreign policy to winning the Cold War. The only way to win is, I believe, 2016 will be an election like 1980, and that we will win, as Reagan said, by painting in bold colors and not pale pastels. Now, the second part of your question, you said, okay, if you win, how do you change it? If I'm elected president, number one, I will make abundantly clear to Republican leadership, if you keep passing corporate welfare and cronyism and pork, I will veto it. As president, one president can veto and stop the corruption by standing up. But in addition to that, as president, I will lead vigorously with Congress to address the real priorities of the American people, to bring back jobs and economic growth and opportunity. And you do that, number one, by repealing Obamacare. And I will fight tooth and nail in Congress for us to finally honor the commitments to repeal every word of Obamacare and to pass fundamental tax reform, ideally adopting a simple flat tax where every American can fill out his or her taxes on a postcard and we can abolish the IRS. Now, more broadly, Chad, a president can do a great deal on both foreign policy and on regulatory reform in the executive branch, even without Congress standing up and leading. A president has a great deal of authority. Foreign policy can change overnight. It's worth remembering, Iran, in 1981, released our hostages the day Ronald Reagan was sworn in. That's the difference a strong commander-in-chief can make. And on regulatory reform, we have never seen a president willing to use the full Article II authority of the Constitution and the presidency to take on the regulatory state, to take on the EPA and the CFPB and OSHA and all of the federal regulators that descend like locusts on small businesses and destroy jobs. Under Democrats, regulations grow exponentially. Under Republicans, sadly, they grow more slowly. I give you my word, if I am elected president, when I leave office, the body of federal regulations will be materially smaller, and human liberty, the liberty of each of us, will be an equal amount larger as a result. 